1.2.1 Illustrations of Conflicts The Silent Sale A customer would call with a service need and the customer service representative would deliver the mandatory sales pitch for their supplemental services. If the customer declined and the customer service representative was below quota, he or she would add the service to the customer's contract anyway. A month or so later, the customer would notice that the service had been mistakenly added to the bill and would again call the company to have the error corrected. The employee got credit for the sale because it was in the computer system for the required 30 days beating the quota. As a bonus, call frequency increased due to these intentional errors requiring the company to increase overtime and add employees. It was a double victory for the employees. They earned their sales commissions and got the company for imposing sales quotas in the service bureau. The disconnected customer. At a certain organization, the customer service people were subjected to a series of productivity and quality measurements. One of the performance measurements assessed how efficiently the customer service representative handled the problem. Call durations were monitored and automatically recorded. The company's interest was in driving down the average call length so that more calls could be handled by fewer employees. Supervisors, who were measured on the average call times in their units, used every technical and motivational tactic at their disposal to encourage employees to keep call duration to a minimum. When an employee's average time rose above the desired goal, several options were present. The easiest for the employee was to take calls and then intentionally hang up after only a few seconds. These micro-calls drove down the average at the customer's and company's expense. The company, with several hundred customer service employees online, was averaging, by our most conservative estimate, close to 500 intentional hang-ups per day. Call volume rose, customer satisfaction fell, and the company spent thousands of dollars fixing their trouble-prone telephone system. Coding the customer. A company was very concerned with customer satisfaction. A staff of market researcher routinely called customers to evaluate their satisfaction with the product and the level of customer service. Any customer dissatisfaction with services received was immediately communicated to the supervisor and the guilty employee was chastised in an effort to improve service levels. For customers who preferred not to be troubled with a follow-up call, a code could be placed in their file to eliminate them from the printout of current contacts used to select customers for follow-up phone contacts. Here was an easy way to avoid punishment. If a customer service representative had a particularly difficult call or lost their cool with a customer, they simply went into the records and coded the customer for no follow-up calls. In this way, they assured themselves that the only customer complaints that would reach management were those where the customer took the time to write. They knew that only a very small percentage of dissatisfied customers would go to that length. Once again, the employees found ways to protect themselves from a perceived hostile management.